Hi, I'm Nick from the Cycle Hub, and this is the Mondraker Crafty Carbon. The Mondraker Crafty Carbon is Mondraker's flagship e-bike. It's their all-mountain, stroke enduro, hard-hitting e-bike that's really designed to do a little bit of everything. Recently, I've had a chance to get out on one and really experiment with what it feels like on the trails, what it's like to climb on, and a little bit like what it's like to live with, and who I think it might be ideal for. With me in the studio today, I've got two of the Carbon Crafty models, the Mondraker Crafty Carbon R and the Mondraker Crafty Carbon RR. Now, the Crafty R, even though it's the entry level model in the Carbon Crafty range, it still comes with some really brilliant kit. It's got Fox 38s up front with a Fox Float X2 rear shock. This means you've got some of the latest suspension tech on the bike. It also means that it's equipped to deal with the additional stresses and strains that e-bikes put through the componentry. On the RR, we also have the Fox 38 and Float X2, but we're looking at the top spec factory versions, which means Kashima coating and all of the fancy internals. The bike that I actually got to ride was this one here, the RR. It is a brilliant bit of kit. For me, when I'm usually riding e-bikes, I tend to find that, yeah, they are great fun on the downs, and they let you get away with a little bit of murder because of that additional bit of weight. But sometimes when it gets into those technical sections, I find that they're harder to flick from tire edge to tire edge and get around those nimble little corners. But I didn't actually really find that as much of a problem at all riding on the Carbon Crafties. They actually felt much more responsive and much more alive than I'm used to big e-bikes feeling. And when I was on the trail and it got into those tight technical sections, the biggest thing I noticed was the lightness of the rear end of the bike. It really can be flicked round and picked up and put where you want it, which means that when it does get tight and twisty, you're not there thinking you want a barge of a bike that you can't quite get around. It really does flick from side to side really nicely. I could go into some of the corners with a lot of pace, get on the brakes nicely beforehand, shed some speed and find plenty of traction. Part of this is to do, I think, with the forward geometry, which we spoke about before on the Mondraker bikes. Now this forward geometry shifts your weight forward and helps you ride that front wheel. And in doing so, really helps you maximize the grip you can get from the front end. And I found with the Crafties, the same thing I found when riding the Foxies, that if you really do commit to the front wheel and trust the grip will be there, it'll start to ping around corners really nice and smoothly. Taking the Crafty off some jumps also tended to be pretty fun. It wasn't hard to pick up, and that again comes back, I think, to that much lighter feeling rear end. When you actually get hands on with one of these bikes and pick them up, you'll find that the weight is very balanced from front to rear. And that for me gave me a nice stable feel in the air. Climbing on the Crafty, as I'm sure you can imagine with e-bikes, is one of the things you wanted to do pretty well. The whole point of having the e-bike is so it can get you back to the top of the trail so you can get on with riding again. I think it's a mix of the slightly chunkier tires and the zero linkage suspension that Mondraker use really helped to provide traction. So even when I got to a few quite blown out climbs on some fairly off camber routes, I had the odd slip of the wheel here and there, but mostly it tracked the ground really well and it kept me climbing really comfortably, even when I was sat there in turbo mode, just trying to pop to the top. This bike though, isn't just made for flying down big, steep technical descents. It's still actually a lot of fun taking it on a big XC ride, getting on little bits of single track and being able to hop around, pop off side hits and do all the sort of fun stuff you'd usually want to be doing on your shorter travel, non e-bike bike. The whole of the crafty range, whether it's the carbon crafties or the aluminium crafties, they all now come with Bosch's latest generation of motor and battery and kiosk system. This means you've got a 750 watt hour battery in there, which provides you plenty of power for all day rides or even whole weekend rides, depending on what you're doing. My first experience of riding the Crafty was actually out in Spain when Mondraker flew us out there. And I went out on one of the Carbon Crafties for about four and a half, five hours in some of the steep hills around Alicante. And I still came back afterwards with about 30% battery left. So if you were going away for a weekend, looking to do a few longish days, but not crazy long, you'll probably find that the whole charge in that battery would get you round fairly well. A smart new detail on the new Carbon Crafties and Aluminium Crafties is they've moved 
the on and off switch and the battery indicator nicely into the top tubes of the bike. This means it's really been able to slim down the button that you use for changing through gears. It's still there, but it's much more sleek and doesn't get in the way anywhere nearly as much. Also, when it comes to the kiosk display that these bikes come with, at first, they'll usually come on the bike with it sticking out the front. But the nice thing about these little adapters is you can turn these round and mount the screen nice on top of the stem, which gets out of harm's way. It means you can carry on thrashing down those trails without worrying that if you do have an off, you're gonna snap your screen off as well. As far as wheels and tires are concerned, it's all taken care of by Maxxis and Mavic. You've got the Mavic DE Max wheel sets on these bikes which means they are specially designed to deal with the stresses and strains that e-bikes will put through them. With the Maxxis tires, you've got a DHR on the rear with a DHF on the front. Both of these are coming in XO Plus casings to give you that little bit extra protection on the tires. I'd actually always recommend, if you're buying an e-bike, chuck an insert in the rear tire at least. These bikes put a lot of force through their wheels and you wanna make sure that you're protecting the rims and also not getting any unnecessary cuts or pinch flats on the tires. At the moment, we're actually doing an e-bike bundle with all of our full price e-bikes where you can get inserts and other things like that all included. So we think you have everything you need. As far as the Bosch motor is concerned, I find that it provides power really, really smoothly and has some amazing modes to get the most out of riding the bike. Usually when I'm on the bikes, I'll be using Tour Plus or the e-mountain bike mode. These are my preference because it will actually adjust the amount of power that is put through the cranks by the motor, depending on how much power you put through the cranks. It'll also conserve your battery usage a bit too. Even though you've got the big 750 watt batteries, you still want to be able to make sure you're maximizing your time on the bike. And you can definitely do that by using these other modes. Another nice feature included on the Carbon Crafties is where they've situated the charge port. Now they haven't just bunged it under the bike somewhere or there's no flappy battery cover. They've got a nice charging port high up on the side of the bike that has a proper latch to it with a proper little door. This keeps out all the dirt, debris, water, dust, and you have to worry about any rubber plug sort of falling off. It's a really nice little feature and it's a nice thing to see and hopefully see on more bikes to come as well. One thing I think Mondre could do very well is make a good looking bike. And that definitely is still the case with the Carbon Crafties. They've done a fantastic job of making a full fat e-bike that actually still looks really quite nice and sleek. And they've still kept that distinct slim top tube that you're accustomed to seeing on Mondrakers. Both these bikes in either spec are fantastic options. You're getting bang up to date componentry on both of them. Whether you've got the factory finished Kashima products from Fox here, or you have their performance products on this bike, they are still Fox 38s and Float X2s, which are all things that have been bought out in the last year or so, meaning you're getting something which isn't going to be obsolete and out of date as you buy it from the shop. And that's a really, really nice thing, which they've done with the whole of the Crafty range, even down to the base spec aluminium, it still has 38s and a Fox X2, which really brings it together as a nice package. With 150 mm of suspension at the rear and 160 mm at the front, it puts it nicely in that all mountain enduro category, and it really does feel at home there. For a rider who's got a good bit of experience and really likes to try and extract the most from the trail and from their bike, I think the Crafty is really going to be a bike that will suit you. Overall, I had a great time riding these bikes. I really couldn't recommend them more. And if you want to get out on one and see what it's like, give us a call. We've got a couple of demo bikes knocking around, which I'm sure we can let you take out from time to time and uh, get to experience it for yourself. As always, if you want any additional information or want to talk spec on these bikes or think, yeah, that sounds great, but how about swapping out the brakes for something like this? Or can I pop an insert in the rear like we spoke about before? Then just give us a shout, drop us an email or come see us in store. We'll make you a coffee, have a chat and we'll get something sorted for you. Cheers for watching the review. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll be back soon. Cheers for watching. Oh, and don't forget, if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe and tick the notification button, which is, as always, somewhere around here.